go. They're going to be pulling this tape right now. The elite men are ready here. The 2021 UCI World Cyclocross Championships. Watch the lights, the battle. And we are off and racing. Van der Poel, Wout Van Aert, Van Kessel's there. Pitcock gets a great start down the center here for Great Britain. Wout Van Aert just leans a little bit on the Brit. And it's Matthew Van der Poel that gets that whole shot through the first corner. So it's Van der Poel from Van Aert, Pitcock. Arts is there. Curtis White just going through a picture. There's Heinrich Chausler also up there. Felipe Orts from Spain. Laurent Swake on the right there in the light blue of Belgium. Quentin Hermans just moving up. Uh, Steve Chanel from France in the center there has got a good start onto the bridge. And they are over that and a little dab there. They just come to a little bit of a halt down the back end of the group. Stebar, unfortunately, Jeremy, they come to a halt there on the bridge, kind of like we did in the under 23 women. Yeah, it's going to be hard starting from the rear row, but a guy like Skibar, lots of power in the legs. He's going to be all right on this. If he's got his running game on point, he'll be able to do something here. You already see a lot of intensity, a lot of speed coming out of CB, so that's very, very good. At Pitcock, though, unfortunately, a little bit of a rough start there in that section. Looks like there's been a problem for Pitcock as he gets shuffled back. Into the sand, Van Aert on the front in the light blue of Belgium. Tone Arts, look at the speed and power that they're carrying through this section. There's Tom Pidcock going through. Chanel just over there. Tone Arts as they come to a halt there. They're riding further down the beach here. They're right down as the waves break on the beach there. You can see the riders just dodging them and moving out of the way as the waves crash. They're looking for that solid sand. And Matthew Van Der Poel, just a tiny little gap there as Laurence Swake, number 10. 10, moves up so it's the light blue of Belgium the orange of the Netherlands that are very much up here at the moment number three Corny van Kessel back Wout van Aert here as they cut across the beach looking for this tight line across here and then it's the dismount and the run in the sand Wow, Marty, these guys are absolutely flying right now as they come through. All of the riders we talked about in the beginning of this, Wout Van Aert, Matthew Van Aert, or Laudan Swick, own artists, followed up there by, uh, looks to be either Corny Van Kessel, no, excuse me, Quinton Hermans there, just behind. So very, very fast opening lap when they came down that we have not seen speed like this on the beach or at this pace yet today, Marty. These guys are truly flying right now. Wout Van Aert. Remount kicks on here ahead of uh, Matthew Van der Poel. If you were with us at Overice last week, the final round of the World Cup, Wout Van Aert taking that one by a minute and three from Matthew Van der Poel. Let's have a look down through your group, and it's Belgium leading. So they're looking to try and take their first championship of this weekend. It's three from three for the Netherlands, and Matthew Van der Poel, the only Dutch rider, right up here at the front, but it's a little gap back there to Corne Van Kessel. And the Dutch team also made Joris Neuvenhaus, David Van der Poel, also in here as well with Lars Van der Haar into this sand. And it's Van Aert and Van der Poel right on the front as Van der Poel tries to get up as close as he can here to Wout Van Aert. He kicks on at the front as they uh, look to try and ride as long as they can through this section. Can they make it right the way through before the start of the bridge, which is a 21% gradient, and they're staying on the bikes all the way through that section. This is unbelievable right now. Van Aer and Matthew Van Der Poel only three minutes into this race already with probably 10, 12 bike lengths over the rest of the group. Van Aer pushes it over the top right now, Marty. These two, like I said, their rivalry will not die. This is the setup for a massive day of racing. But right now, it looks to me as though Wout Van Aer is trying his hardest to replicate what he did in Overijssel last week at the World Cup. He wants to put Matthew Van Der Poel under pressure early on and try to take this race by the horns. Elisabeth goes through. There's Lars van der Haar just going through your picture. There's Tom Pidcock, Kevin King just going through um, your picture. And then Joshua Dubo from France. But already, as Jeremy said, we're barely th uh, three and a half minutes into this race. And already, Wout van Aert and Mathieu van der Poel forming a pair at the front, followed by four Belgian riders, all in those light blue colors. Swake, Hermans, Van Torenhout and Arts. That is your, uh, your chasing group as, uh, behind them. Ely Isabets wearing number six, trying to come across with uh, Corny Van Kessel, Joris Neuvenhaus, Lars van der Haar jumps over the top of uh, Dan Suter there. Pitcock tries to get on the wheel. This is going to be an interesting one now. Lap one, 
as they uh, start this grass section. A little dab there from uh, Van Aert. Will Van der Poel choose to just uh, stay right on the wheel. Very, uh, the, the sand section back in towards that bridge. Um, really interesting uh, to see. Yeah, you see now Wout Van Aert here coming up at the front again. Vanderbilt has been able to uh, to stick with him for this first five minutes of slap, but this is going to easily be by a long shot the fastest lap that we've seen turned on this course today. And not surprisingly, the elite men's race typically turning those fastest laps. You see Ezer a bit now trying to get there. Corne Van Kessel behind him, but at the front right now, Matthew Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert coming through. This is the undulating part of this. This is the first time that these riders are seeing this at race pace. It's the first time that we're watching them at race pace. The gap already pretty significant as they come through. Tom Pitcock, the dark horse of the day, not here, but you see Van Aert there hits that rut, carries him right across Vanderpool, not giving an inch as he sits right on his rear wheel right now, Marty. So as they fly through these sections, none of this looks to be giving them any trouble as they go through here, really not respecting any of the speed limits we've seen previously. These guys are, are truly tearing it up. They are indeed, and this rivalry, as we, uh, as we said uh, just in our little pre-show, if you were with us uh, for that one, the uh, this race, the rivalry between these two riders is huge. And if you look back through the history of their titles that at elite level and as uh, pro cyclocross riders, in 2015, Matthew Vanderpool taking the title. Wout Van Aert was second when Wout Van Aert took his title. In uh, 2016, he uh, won that header, Lars Van Aert, Kevin Powles. 2017, Wout Van Aert from Matthew Van Der Poel and Powles. Then Wout Van Aert, Matthew Van Der Poel taking the bronze in 2018. And then in 2019, Van Der Poel from Wout Van Aert. That was the uh, the order. And then, of course, last year, Wout Van Aert battling back from that crash in the 2019 Tour de France. But already, these two are absolutely flying in the elite men's uh, cycle across the championship of the world. And already, it's a 13-second gap. Back to that chasing group. Quentin Harriman, Michael Van Toren out, Laurent Swain, Tone Arts, and then a bit of five seconds back to Elie bit. Then a small gap to Joris Neuvenhaus, Corny Van Kessel, Tom Pitcock, is sitting in 10th for Great Britain. Then you got Lars van der Haar in 11th, Yanni Vermeersch in 12th, Dan Suter 13th, Joshua Dubo for France 14th, Kevin Kuhn 15th for Switzerland, then Tim Malia 16th, Jadenek Stiebar now up to 17th, Curtis White for the USA sitting 18th, and uh, with David Manu of France and Jan Grass the top 20. But we are through the line at the end of lap one here, and seven minutes and 27 seconds is the gap is the the lap time that is phenomenal that is a scorcher marty <laughs> that is an absolute scorcher based on anything else we've seen so 727 that first lap for van air to go across right now and uh yeah as you see the rest of the crowd coming in here vanderpool takes over the for the first time today On lap two, Matthew Van Der Poel now hits the front. Wout Van Aert right on the wheel as they start the bridge. And as we said, 21% is the gradient. And then they are over the top of this bridge and then drop down. It's 134 meters long. You're 39 and a half meters up, 52 meters down. And then they've got that 20 meters of extended uh, reinforcement on the sand to just give the riders something to just help give them and build that momentum into the sand but through that section you can see the line here that van der Poel and van Aert are taking as they head down to try and find some solid sand the waves crash again as they ride through the sea here we are right on the beach here in ostende it's uh the sun is shining the uh, the clouds coming in just a little bit it was uh, one degree celsius a little bit earlier on two to three degrees celsius Celsius, 36 to 37 Fahrenheit, and the wind, 21 kilometers an hour. It's a kind of cross headwind as they grind through this section. That's all power output right there, Marty. Just straight watts right into the beach as they go through. Boom, off the bike. Bikes onto the shoulder. You see Vanderpool already with his jersey cracked halfway open, so you knew he did a good warm up. Sweck, the sand specialist now uh, here, really coming across, taking that wider line to stand his bike a little longer. We saw that play out in the under 23 women's race with Blanca Vosch, but it looks like Sweck's running game on point today as he comes up. Now, Tone Arts leads the chase to try to bring back a little bit of time, but these two riders, Marty, look like they've really 
flown the coop. They're off and running, and Matthew Venerable right now on the front of this race. Here's Tom Pickdog from Great Britain trying to get himself across to this effort early problem where he got shuffled back over that uh, over that one flyover. But let's take a look here at this section, posing almost no problems. We saw the other races. These sections really were hard to get through for a lot of the riders. For the elite men's race, no issues at all. They're riding a majority of this course, except for that long run that the other riders in the chase group are on right now. They are indeed. Just over 10 minutes of racing so far. And that uh, opening lap, a real scorcher, as uh, Jeremy said. And into the sand, you can see the way the bike just dances around uh, under the riders. They try and control through the sand. Van Aert comes past Vanderpool, manages to stay on the bike here as Vanderpool has to dismount. Just a little gap opening there by Wout Van Aert. It's so unpredictable, the sand. Yeah. That's going to frustrate Vanderpool there, seeing Wout Van Aert. Wout Van Aert's going to take a lot, of, uh, a lot of confidence from being able to do that and put Vanderpool under pressure. Vanderpool there with a small error there that's uh, going to that's gonna play mentally, but he knows that he's got the form. You can see in Vanderpool, he's able to take the front. He'll close this back up, is my prediction. However, Vander, uh, Van Aert is not going to play games. He's going to continue to apply pressure to Vanderpool. If Vanderpool continues to make any mistakes like that, and vice versa, right? If Wout Van Aert makes any mistakes like that, it's going to be on Vanderpool to really start to open it up and that's how the game is played marty in cyclocross you wait for the moment that someone makes a mistake to pounce that's what it's all about you don't ride them off your wheel you bring the pace up as fast as you can through a section then you wait for a mistake and then you capitalize it wow van Eric was in a perfect position there next to uh matthew venerpool to be able to go straight past him and continue to ride that section now he's got about five six bike lengths over matthew venerpool Tonart is your chaser for Belgium at 18 seconds. Then you've got about five seconds back to Spake, Van Tour and, and Hermans. Then you've got Elisabet is also now on the back of that group. Joris Neuvenhaus not far away. Tom Pidcock at 34 seconds behind Wout Van Aert. And Corne van Kessel from the Netherlands rounds out your top 10 with Lars van der Haar. They are both together. Then you've got Yanni Vermeers, Dan Suter, Josh Dubo, Kevin Kuhn, Tim Malier, Genetic Stivart, Jan Grass and David Manu with Timon Rude is your top 20. Vanderpool trying to find his way back here. And this was the moment you could see Vanderpool there in the sand, just uh, uh, sliding sideways a little bit through that section. And he's just trying to steadily just ride his way back onto Wout Van Aert here. Yeah, Van Aert not taking, uh, not taking any chance as you see cold hands there for Laudan Swick as he comes through that that uh, water coming off the ocean there from what I've been told really does get the rider's hand super, super chilly today. One degree uh, Celsius, about 33 Ooh, degrees Van Fahrenheit. Van Der Poel's down. Matthew Van Der Poel goes down in that rut, goes over the top. We saw this last week, didn't we, Jeremy? The pace, the power of Wout Van Aert and Matthew Van Der Poel very much on the defensive here. And that's, uh, as you just said, it's those forced errors. And you can see the gap now opening to Wout Van Aert. Let's have a replay of this. Yeah, so he comes through, and he's just a little bit crooked in that rut as he comes through it. Just threw him for a loop there. It was, a, unfortunately, too big of a hit for it to be a quick back right up. But he uh, he's down. He's got the bike there. He's got a little bit of a problem there with one of the shifters, but he's able to get going again. But that's not uh, good news for Matthew Vanderpool. He's going to need to find some place to be able to take back time when Wout Van Aert has already set some scorching pace on this course, but does not look like the gap is as big as I would have expected right now, Marty. And you can see, watch those tires. It's a great sign of the, uh, you can see the way Matthew Van Der Poel is trying to carry that speed through those sections, just trying to string these ones together. Just a little dab there. You can see how unpredictable this track has become. Yesterday, we had the rain. Today, it was cold overnight. It was one degree Celsius when we started today. And you saw Lawrence Wake just banging out the hands and uh, trying to get some life back into the fingers. And it has, it just makes it, uh, the, the thaw, Jeremy, just makes it really slick it does yeah when uh, when I got a report this morning from some of the riders that were there they were saying that the course had frozen a lot overnight and there was a very slick thin top layer on it these riders are going faster than anyone else today so you're seeing some real uh, some real stuff happen here where you where the course is starting to uh, defrost and it's starting to get very very slick so the conditions perhaps Marty have changed slightly from when these riders last saw the course and did their last pre-ride laps. But right now, we're going to get a gap on how much time Mount Venere has been able to take on this uh, scorching second lap. 
Visual Man in third place. Tone Arts, we heard from him. Uh, we uh, chatted to him before these championships, and uh, he had the belief that he was, could be up here and challenge for a medal, as you would expect. But Wout Van Aert tucks it down through the, start, the, through the finish line this time. 14 minutes and 40 seconds is the race time so far for Wout Van Aert. A 7 minute and 13 second lap. Matthew Van Der Poel, the clock is uh, ticking after that uh, error in the sand and that little, that tumble that he took through that that rut that just catapulted him over the top of the bars. Wout Van Aert, though, now leading. 15 seconds is the gap. Back to Matthew Van Der Poel, and then a 10-second gap from Van Der Poel. Back to Tone Arts for Van Der Poel, Jeremy. Potentially, he'd learn, he will hope here that Tone Arts can close that gap back up to him, maybe give him a, a little bit of a, a, of a respite. But Tone Arts won't do anything to help the chase. Right now, Wout Van Aert going up the flyover. The gap is about 13 seconds as they fly through. Pidcock there coming through in about 10th spot. Wout Van Aert lines himself up now off the bridge onto the sand. You can see there just getting the gears ready as he comes off that one. Look at the sand being thrown off and kicked up. Um, by uh, the bike of Wout Van Aert as he's uh, into the sand there, dropping down onto the uh, the sand at the bottom of that section. And uh, Mathieu Van Der Poel doing the same. The speed over 50 kilometers an hour, 55 kilometers an hour. They were expecting off that bridge into the sand. And now as they line up here, Van Der Poel will be able to just see Wout Van Aert ahead of him. Van Aert off and running here. And here's your next group. The blue jerseys of Belgium with the white jersey of Great Britain behind him. Tom Pidcock is there. And then comes Joris Neuvenhaus, another uh, former under 23 champion. And so Van Aert, so impressive in his running. Corny Van Kessel carrying his speed. So does Lars Van der Haar. There's Yanni Vermeersch. Vermeers is uh, another uh, super rider, is Yanni Vermeers. There's a great shot along the beach as Vanderpool running there to try and close this one back up. 15 seconds is the gap between Wout Van Aert and Mathieu Vanderpool. If you were uh, with, it, with us for the, uh, the last uh, few years, if you've been familiar with cyclocross, 15 seconds. Still a, a closable gap here by Matthew Vanderpool. Tone Arts, good to see him sprinting up the sand there to try and close this gap back down. This is the section, Marty, where we saw Wout Van Aert ride and ace this last lap where he was able to start that small gap over Vanderpool and put him on the back foot. He aces it again. This is going to be uh, telling where Matthew Vanderpool comes in. Can he ride this section? Does he have the finesse and the power in his legs today to match where Van Aert is excelling? Van der Poel, here we have it. So the lap time so far. Wout Van Aert, lap one, 7.17. Lap two, 7.13 as Pidcock trying to stay on the back of this group. 16 seconds is the gap back to Van der Poel's lap time so far. 7.17 and 7.27. Then 31 seconds from Wout Van Aert, back to Tone Arts. That's the gap. The Belgian rider in third spot was very much looking forward to a home championship. Then you've got 46 seconds back to Michael Van Tornout, Laurent Swake, Eli Isabek, Quentin Hermans and Tom Pidcock in that group together. Norris, Joris Neuvenhaus, Lars Van der Haar are your top 10 riders in this one as Tone Arts on this 21% gradient. We see Heinrich Hausler for Australia just on the other side descending that bridge. We are on lap three of eight. Matthew Vanderpool into the pits for a bike change. Can he close this one back down? It is looking like 10 seconds. Swift and smooth bike change there for Vanderpool. 10 seconds. Gut feeling here, Jeremy. Can he get back on on this lap? Well, he rode that section faster. He brought the gap down from 13, so he did find three or four seconds on that. I had it at the top of the climb there at about nine seconds, so that uh, that exchange will lose him a little bit of time because obviously Van Aert not taking that, but you can see Van Aert in a forward momentum here, Marty. He definitely has not given up the chase. This is not the traditional bike race. This isn't even a World Cup. This is for the rainbow stripes. This is for the history books. So right now, you can see this isn't the position that Matthew Van Aert wants to be in. 
You can see a little bit of self-talk going on there as he comes through, but uh, he's a champion and he's going to fight until the end today. The difference. You've been in. You've been in these championships. You know, we talk about the difference between the season-long competitions and the pressure of a World Cup, and and just the the, oh, the pressure of a World Championships. The, the difference in the feeling and getting that form right. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Between you know, with your with your coaches, with your team managers, with your equipment, with the with the course and the subtleties and the nuances and and the the margin for for error in a race like this. Yeah, I mean, for for Matthew Vanderpool and for Wout Van Aert, I think that this is a this is a course, Marty, where it it, it comes down to which which rider it doesn't suit better, right? They're both on very very similar trajectories in their career. They're both uh, similar power outputs, power to weight. You know, they do have a lot of similarities as riders, but uh, Wout Van Aert been really able to show himself in the torquey, located stuff, the heavy mud of Dendermonde, uh, a race like Overice that really is able to showcase his skill set there. So Vanderpool has been um, has been more of a the big climber right the cobblestone riding 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 that uh, race at the tour of flanders almost perfectly as you see ben out there just looking for that green grass as he kind of tips in and out of those uh those horns that come off those um uh course uh, course markers there so he's really everybody's just trying to find a little bit of grip out here but you can see that Matthew Vanderpool is bringing back the gap now on Wout Van Aert having to bring the pace up realizing that he's not going to be able to keep Vanderpool uh, uh, at bay the entire day these riders in my opinion right now Marty are going to come back together You'd love to see his eyes behind those mirrored glasses, wouldn't you? Because he has got a face like thunder as Matthew Vanderpool. You can see he's angry and he's coming back now to Wout Van Aert uses that momentum. As we know Vanderpool can do on these sort of corners and this sort of course, strings a few together to pull back those seconds, stays on the bike, just a margin lot, a fraction longer than Wout Van Aert. He just hangs that left foot out just to counterbalance his body weight. They are back together. The big hitters on this. This one and we lined it up as a heavyweight championship of the world and Matthew Vanderpool fights his way back through to the front gets that front position gets that advantage they hit the course racing track this time and Wout Van Aert here Jeremy has Van Aert got a problem he has it does by the look of it like front wheel it puncture wheel puncture that's not a good thing for Van Aert now as Matthew Vanderpool takes over and this has been the story of the year where one of these riders has a mechanical issue and the other one comes back so now we know why Van Aert was having trouble why he was losing time over Matthew Vanderpool and Vanderpool is coming back so quickly but it's not this is this is tough because this is coming into the harder sections of the course so will they see uh, enough time here it looks like he's going to come in now to the pit zone so this is good news uh, this is good news for Wout Van Aert he's going to be able to get a quick break change and not lose a lot of time to Vanderpool. So now, Wout Van Aert in the pits, quick change, boom, bike gone. That was really, if, if you had the time of flat party, that was perfect. But the tables, almost identically from one lap ago, have turned now. That is cyclocross. That is why we love this sport, the subtleties of it. And uh, Matthew Vanderpool's got the front. Vanderpool, and he uh, that puncture by Wout Van Aert. One week it goes to puncture, the mechanical might go his way. The other week it goes to uh, Wout Van Aert as our chasing group just go through. Now it's back to the Belgian to chase down the Dutchman in the lead. It's 11 seconds. Here's the gap. That is what caught, that's what the puncture cost. Wout Van Aert, who gets to the top of the bridge, starts that fast descent into the sand. 11 seconds. Can he close this one down? Tonarts is at 28. Van Turen out of 49 with Sway. Ease a bit. Tom Pidcock from Great Britain. Quentin Hermans, the other Belgian in that group. Joris Neuvenhaus, ninth, tenth place at the moment for Lars van der Haar. Through the surf, through the waves on the beach of Matthew van der Poel. The Dutchman, can he now uh, capitalize on this one right away? But Van Aert, the power as he tries to keep the pressure on through this section to close back up the rivalry. It swings one way, then it swings the other way. There's plenty of time for Van Aert to come back. He's going to ride this one with patience in, uh, in, in the, uh, the maturity that he has as a rider. He has the experience, Marty, to be able to know that this is a long race, right? 23 minutes into this. This is going to go long today. They're only starting their fourth lap now, so they've still got half plus a, about a lap here as Michael Van Korn had has a little bit of trouble there. But now, right now, Matthew Van Der Poel finds himself in a, in a situation that he didn't expect. He was thought he was out of the race early on. He couldn't believe what Van Aert had done. He had crashed. That 
kind of that, that set him back and frustrated him. You can see him doing a little bit of self talk. Then Mount Manair has that flat tire, and now Matthew Vanderpool is in the lead. So it's all about again coming in, being that champion, riding this course, Marty. That downhill, like the the, the pull of Zonhova, I was saying earlier. It's crazy how fast those riders are going down through that, and then through this section it's all power output the entire way through so such unique conditions here in Ostenda today there is indeed it's nine hey, seconds the gap here. between Matthew Vanderpool and Huat Van Aert then you've got a 31 seconds back to Tone Arts 50 to Tom Pidcock now for Great Britain who's sitting in fourth spot east of it Van Turen out and Swake with uh, Herrmann are oh, your next group Wout Van Aert manages to clean that section through the sand can he now fight and drag his way back up to Matthew Vanderpool Vanderpool exits the sand cleanly starts that 21% gradient over the climb and he uh, unclips his foot there Jeremy that might just give a glimmer of hope to Wout Van Aert and perhaps a second back on the bridge Wout Van Aert now having a moment though he's had to dig deep you can see the little bit of fatigue after the first couple of flaps must bring this in for Van Aert he's this is going to be the harder part of it that hard to wait there that's not going to be Van Aert's friend there that's such a steep climb Van Aert bigger than Matthew Vanderpool uh definitely a different style of riders but this is going to be that steep embankment is going to be hard for Wout Van Aert, but we know that the V12s are out at the front, right? Matthew Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert really off the front of this one. As they come in, no bike exchanges this lap for either rider right now. Vanderpool, like I said many times, just uh, there it was. Just a little bit of a, uh, a problem there with that pedal. Just clipped out a little bit uh, as uh, maybe there was some sand left in over it on that cleat when he tried to go up that climb. Just so much power out, but ends up not being able to, uh, to stay in the, the pedal today. Lap four of eight here, the Elite Men's World Cyclocross Championships. Matthew Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert are just uh, swinging punches at each other at the moment. It's going one way, then the other way. Vanderpool, after that crash, who had to chase down Wout Van Aert, then that front wheel puncture for Van Aert, who now is sitting at seven seconds behind his rival. Here is your man who is sitting in the bronze medal position at the moment, Tom Pidcock is 15 seconds behind Tone Arts in the chase for Brods. He's got a, a six second advantage over the group that's being led by Elise a bit onto this section. There's the Brit, there's Tom Pidcock, his arch rival, uh, Matthew Vanderpool, Wout Van Aert, Elise a bit is uh, the, and Tom Pidcock, the big rivalry of their, uh, their era, their generation, you would say. There's Laurence uh, Swake, and then you have a double, uh, un former uh, double under 23 champion in Lyon. Lars van der Haar, who is now up to ninth spot for you, Stevie fans. Jadenek Stieber sitting in 15th spot in this one. David van der Poel, 20th. Curtis White, 21st for the USA. Steve Chanel, 28th. And then you have Heinrich Hausler, who is in 35th spot here for Australia. Four minutes and nine seconds down. As you see them really leaning their weight now, Marty, through those big ruts that they've established. So now, after several laps, they've really got their race lines nailed down. They know where to go, and it's all going to be about where they can find a couple of seconds. For Wout Van Aert, it's going to be where he can find some time. He realizes that this is about halfway through this race, and he's going to need to find the energy to be able to come back. He put in a massive couple of early laps, suffers that flat tire. So on this start-finish straight, Marty, we're going to see the actual lap, and we're going to see if Van Aert can bring back Matthew Vanderpool as, uh, as they go into this sand section again. These are the sections where they're very, very evenly matched. You couldn't say that one rider is better than the other. That steep descent um, off of the bridge into the sand, they look very evenly matched. In the running sections, they look evenly matched. It's really hard to, uh, to call this one where one of these riders could find time over another one, but it may come down, Marty, just to the errors that are made out on course. Who makes the least amount of them being such an even matchup? The uh, gap at this stage, eight seconds as Vanderpool cleans that section. He really does have the measure. You can hear the squeal of the disc brakes as Vanderpool just uh, strings these sections. I would say on this one, this is a section that Vanderpool, we know on these sort of big berms and little banks that we see from Vanderpool. These are the ones where he strings those fractions of a second together, a quarter second here, half second there through that section. And Matthew Vanderpool is back on to the Wellington Hippodrome here, the racing track. And 
as uh, Wout van Aert now will look to try and use his power on this cinder track section to close that gap back up to Matthew Vanderpool, who's opening it. It's nine seconds at this stage at the end of lap four, 11.7 kilometers completed, 29 minutes and 27 seconds as Wout van Aert ups the pressure, ups the power to try and close this one down. That was a seven minute and 20 second lap from Matthew Vanderpool that time. Wow, one of the faster laps of the day. They started out early, 6, uh, 727, but now Vanderpool running seven seconds faster than that, so the pace still very high. Imagine Vanderpool looking very determined on the front right now, Marty. He's going through this as he leads back over to the stand. I'd say the biggest risk on this course right now is this sand section. Onto that bridge, and there's the gap. Four laps to go for Tonarts. He goes through in third spot. Vanderpool on the bridge. We caught a glimpse of Tom Pidcock, who is on a real charge for the bronze medal. He's got Tone Arts in his sight. He is 10 seconds behind Tone Arts. The battle for the gold here. Eight seconds between Matthew Vanderpool for the Netherlands. In the oranges, he exits the bridge, tries to carry that speed through the sand. The bike just skipping and dancing underneath him as he holds the power. Gets cleanly through that section. Back to Wout Van Aert here. Runs off this, this bridge into the sand. Good power. Look at the power and speed of Wout Van Aert through the sand as he gets down onto the beach. There's Vanderpool just ahead of you. Can Matthew Vanderpool make it a dream championship for the Netherlands and go four from four for the Netherlands? Wout van Aert, the man from the home nation looking to keep the hopes and dreams of Belgium alive here and pull back his arch rival, his arch nemesis in Matthew Vanderpool and take the first gold of these championships for Belgium. Right now, Vanderpool off the bike, trotting along, going super fast, keeping that tempo on the run really high. As you see now, this is Tone Arts here riding through this section. This is the uh, this is the very fast, steep downhill sand section. But now, Vanderpool off the bike, bike up on the shoulder with that traditional around the head tube running style that he's been known for. As they come through, some great shots of both these riders. Difference in style again, Marty Vanderpool going for the leg warmers. Van Air not playing games. He's out here. He wants to race as hard as he can. He doesn't need leg warmers. But Van Air doesn't need leg warmers on a 33 degree cold day on the beach. <laughs> There's your uh, great shot. Look at the bike. You can see the control. Watch the wheels. If you're new to cross, if you're uh, joining us for the first time this winter, welcome aboard. And just watch the wheels through the sand. Watch the way that the riders uh, control that bike, which is, uh, D Jeremy, definitely not going in a straight line underneath them. No, it's not. But this section here, very, very challenging. We saw Matthew Vanderpool have a problem here, Marty. This is heavy. This is very, very heavy sand. And I expect that we could see some falters in here. As you see, Vanderpool losing a little bit of momentum. Wout Van Aert off the bike now. Vanderpool manages to stay on. Wout Van Aert has to get off and run through that deep sand section. Remember, we are on the beach. And the effort of Wout Van Aert in this chase. The, uh, the gaps between these two riders as uh, Wout Van Aert has to exit again. So Van Aert off the bike as Van Der Poel manages to, to string that section together. There's your gradient. 21% is the, uh, the gradient on this bridge. And it's 134 meters long. And he started fast, did Wout Van Aert. Seven minutes and 17 seconds was his first uh, lap time for Van Aert. And he, uh, he's, uh, the gap is growing between him and Matthew Van Der Poel. Tone Art skipping along here through the sand as he tries to keep the momentum. There's your battle. This is your fight here for the bronze medal between uh, Tom Pidcock and Tone Art. Can uh, Pidcock get up here and make it three for uh, third place for Great Britain today? The gap, though, that those couple of errors there in the sand, Jeremy by Wout van Art. The gap looking about 13 seconds at the moment. Yeah, the gap is about uh, about 13 seconds. Van Aert, that's the first real problem that we've seen from Van Aert today as he goes through now. Matthew Vanderpool able to ride that section where Van Aert rode it on the first opening laps and where uh, Matthew had to put a foot down and run it. But now we're seeing that, uh, that the tables again have turned. So it's going to be a race of attrition. They've set a tempo here that, uh, that they're both continuing to improve on lap after lap, as we can see from the lap times. So right now, Matthew Vanderpool knows that he's got a good gap. He's been able to ride. He's 
section of the lane. He's able to ride the race that he wants to ride. And you can see that the toll from those really fast paces that flat tire has made Wout Van Aert a little bit, uh, you can see in his face, but he can still see Matthew Van Aert. And that, Marty, that as a racer at this level, he knows that there's still a chance that his, his psyche, his, his, all those things that we talked about, his legacy, the papers, none of it will let Wout Van Aert give up. Even if he's feeling a moment of hardship right now in the race, he's not going to give up this race against Matthew Van Aert today. It's not. These two have treated us to many epic battles over the years, and even in this season alone, the battles between the two of them have been uh, something to behold. And uh, Wout Van Aert trying to uh, hold this one, 11 seconds. This is a great fight as well for your bronze medal between the Belgian Tonarts, the British rider, the British champion, a former junior and under 23 world champion in Tom Pidcock fighting for the bronze medal coming into this one. The uh, the media, the press, especially in the, the nations of Belgium and the Netherlands, talking Tom Pidcock up as the potential bronze medalist in this one behind these two big rivals who are very much the favorites going into today to take the gold medal and it took that puncture from Wout Van Aert after Matthew Van Der Poel had fought back from that crash in that rut to come back up to him it took that front wheel puncture from Van, Van Aert Van Der Poel takes the lead and gives him the advantage Wout Van Aert has got to try and keep this one tight 13 seconds is still very much closable in cyclocross terms well, we've seen it in the past, Marty. We saw it in uh, in uh, Overijsa just last weekend where Wout Van Aert's been able to stick these lap times lap after lap after lap. And we've seen all these riders go deep to be able to get back to one another and it not play out the way they wanted. So perhaps for Van Aert right now, this is a calculated decision to really be able to stick, you know, stick to his guns, right? He wants to ride a consistent race. He doesn't want to go over his head. But right now, it looks like Van Aert is on, on good form. He's got his... Uh, well, obviously, he's not good for him. It looks like he's got good uh, pace and cadence, right? He knows where he needs to go hard. He knows where he needs to sit up. But for Van Aert, I think he's also trying to think he's going to really pay attention to where he decides that he wants to go hard and where he wants to sit up. Because if he goes over his uh, limit, that's what he takes. And those are the things that really add the time. I think they're riding these sections very consistently against each other. If you pin against them, one may be riding something one or two seconds faster than the other, but the other taking that time back on a different part of the course. The time-wise, I think they're consistent. However, I think that the, the mistakes are what we're seeing start to add up a little bit. And right now, Vanderpool has, uh, has ridden two flawless laps in a row, Marty. Wat Van Aert digging deep here, averaging 23.8 kilometers an hour on this one. Three laps to go this time as Van Aert goes through there. 14 seconds is the uh, the gap. Matthew Van Der Poel, the time, the time gaps, the the laps. 17-17, 727, 711, 720, and 720. So the consistency. Wat Van Aert, seven minutes 17, 713, 730, 724, and 7. 25 is the gaps for them. This battle here, four seconds it is now between Tom Pidcock and Tonarts who are going to get set up a thrilling final few laps here in the battle for bronze. As we see Vanderpool now coming Matthew down Vanderpool this flyover. Matthew Vanderpool descends of the flyover on to the sand here for Matthew Vanderpool. And he's now got rid of the glasses, carries that speed, carries that pace through there as he surfs across the sand. We look back now, Jeremy, to this one. Wout Van Aert, the gap at the moment looks like it's growing. The gap does look like it's growing a little bit as Van Aert now comes down. Let's see how his form is through this section. This is where you can see some things in the body language, but Van Aert looks like he's still able to push down a big gear. He can see Matthew Van Der Poel in front of him right now. So as uh, as Van Der Poel here on the front comes through, we'll see this gap a little bit better as they give us this wide shot here in just a moment. Uh, so right now, Van Der Poel riding a lot of that. Tom Pitcock now, Marty, made his way up to third place as caught Tone Ertz. He has indeed, and you can see uh, if you're at the, the bridge, that bridge section very much suits uh, to, uh, Tom Pidcock. Van Aert off the uh, the sea, off the uh, right, riding the uh, the waves crashing right on the beach there as he just adjusts that pedal in his back there as jeremy said keeps that bike super high just uh, gets the pedals into the right position he's still got matthew van der Poel in his sights and that for Wout van art jeremy he's still in this he's still fighting for this title 
Yeah, right now you see that uh, Maxi Venerpool there just coming through. You can hear the clicking of the cameras and the ambient noise. Now Tone Arts has taken over again the front from uh, from Tom Pitcock there. But wow, Venar now trying to make his way back. Look how he just sits in this rut, takes his bike across. This is precision right there. That's not an easy section to ride. But this next section, Marty, that Matthew Venerpool is hitting right now, this, in my opinion, is the most decisive sand part of the course, right? This is the heaviest one that's really given the riders the hard enough, hardest time. If they lose their momentum in this section, this is where they've been having to get off. You see how slow Vanderpool is going, but he just sneaks into that last run that takes him across. Let's see how well Van Aert does here. And you can see the eyes of Matthew Vanderpool, the focus of the leader as he uh, tries to pick that line, ride that right. Wout Van Aert, you can see the shoulders, the body going left and right as he exits that section. Manages to nail that one on this occasion into this next one. That was a, an area where he had a problem the uh, in previous laps as Vanderpool on that he has again and that hands Vanderpool and um, some more seconds there Jeremy yep that's exactly what I was talking about this is the, those are those, those moments right where he's starting to starting to see a little bit of uh, an Achilles heel here of Wout Van Aert in those sections these these are the really heavy sand sections that really do just give us a, a, a little glimpse into where Wout Van Aert's at in his day right now this is a hard hard race the tempo that Wout Van Aert set from the get-go Marty was impressive at to, to, to put it lightly he really set out had that flat tire Vanderpool comes back, and then now Wout wow, Van Aert having a hard time acing these sand sections. That's what you see when you see the fatigue. But right now, you see Michael Van Tornhout come through. Laurent Swag, the sand specialist, coming through. Ely Isidvit with a strong ride here in this chase group. It is indeed. Let's run you through where we are. Matthew Vanderpool leading 19 seconds. We're now being shown is the gap between Matthew Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert. Tone Arts and Tom Pidcock. The 113 to Tone Arts. He's managed to gap Tom Pidcock again by seven seconds. Quentin Hermans, Michael Van Toren out, Lawrence Swag and Elisabeth for Belgium. Then for the Netherlands, you've got uh, Lars van der Hart and Joris Neuvenhaus. He's just gone through your picture. This is Corny van Kessel that's coming into your picture. Behind him, it's the Belgian, Yanni Vermeers. Then you've got Kevin Kuhn from Switzerland in 13th, 14th. Dan Suter followed by Tim Malia. They're at 330, 314, 339. Jedenek Stieber, 17. So a top 20 ride here for the uh, former uh, world champion Jedenek Stieber. Curtis White putting in a strong ride in 19th today. Timon Root in the 20th spot as uh, this gap is starting to grow. 20 seconds. And uh, this is where, Jeremy, just a little dab there by Matthew Vanderpool. When he gets rid of the glasses, it's the close-up shots you can see of the eyes, the focus of Matthew Vanderpool and Tone Arts just starting this sort of traditional um, big two, Tone Arts turn and burn, as we like to call it, to try and distance himself from Tom Pidcock and make sure that a bronze medal for Belgium. Yeah, yeah, Tone Arts there really is focused. Uh, you could hear earlier in the in the race, uh, Sven Ace, the team manager of the Balawasa Trek team, giving Tone Arts some of his uh, experience out on the course, yelling to him, stay this way, stay that way, really giving him a lot of uh, enthusiastic um, chance from the side just to be able to try to to try to try pump up Tone Arts, to be able to take that podium. You know, with these two riders, with Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert, it's very, very hard to find a spot where you can eke out a good day on the podium. Um, if any rider is able to do it, Tone Audits, as I said at the start, on the start line, is definitely the rider that could be capable. Uh, former European champion, Belgian national champion, was uh, so gracious with his time to be able to come on the show and give us an interview. He thought this was something for him. And after we've seen the races that he's done at a similar course in Zonhova, this is definitely uh, got, this is something for, uh, for Tone Audits today, Marty. Wout Van Aert hand slings through there. Just a little uh, slide out there as he uh, has to correct himself off that uh, section. And he's onto the steps this time. He's uh, battled to try and keep Matthew Vanderpool within striking distance. There's Vanderpool though. We saw, we said the focus, the, and Matthew Vanderpool was uh, was angry after that tumble, and uh, it swings backwards and forwards. Can Vanderpool now go four from four here for the Netherlands? It's a huge rivalry. Sometimes when we, when we look at rivalries in sport, Belgium and the Netherlands in cyclocross, like uh, they, they, they exist across all sports, don't they? But this is a massive one. 
Yeah, during my career, it was Lars Boom and, uh, and Sven Ace. Always, always big, big rivalry. But they've been there since the beginning, Marty, with, uh, yeah, with Richard Gronendahl and also, uh, yeah, uh, Mario de Klerk. All of the big riders from Belgium and the Netherlands have gone head-to-head -head many, many times over the years. This is not a storyline that's new for cyclocross fans. But right now, this is here. This is now Wout Van Aert coming in. Looks as though that gap has grown a couple of small errors. Marty, today's race going to run short, as I can tell here. This is a, this is a little bit less time that I would have expected uh, to see for a World Championships. Uh, going to run just, it looks like it'll be just under an hour as it comes through. So right now it's at 44 minutes. They've got two more, two more laps to go at about 15. So, yeah, it's going to be just under an hour for the finishing time. So perhaps a slight miscalculation and uh, the Jeremy it's worth explaining how it works because we we don't come into a race knowing exactly how many laps we're going to get do we some it depends on the course on the course conditions it could be eight laps it could be nine laps it could be 10 laps it's it's all decided and calculated early on and perhaps maybe a slight miscalculation here yeah, as Vanderpool rides, I will explain it. As Vanderpool rides this section here, makes it his way through, but he, you hear the clicking of the gears there as he shifted down. He wants to ride that big cadence through that section to not be kind of flailing left and right. If you can imagine with a higher cadence on the bike, he would have been flailing a lot, and that would throw the bike left and right. The riders like to shift down as they go through the sand as long as they can push the gear, which helps them stay more balanced in the ruts and in the deep sand. So you see Van Aert there. He's also shifting, but it looks like up a little bit as well. So, yeah, so as it gets heavier, shifting up just to keep that cadence very low, though, Marty. But both of them through that section, like I said, evenly matched on this part. So no real differences in style or technique. But uh, but Wout Van Aert there is uh, going to cut across a little bit earlier than Matthew Venerpool and try to run his way back into uh, into the rear wheel of uh, Matthew Venerpool. So to talk a little bit about the lap times, though, uh, to follow up on that question, as we see now, Iserbit, Van Tornhout, Hermans, and Sweat come through with Lars Van Der Haar just behind. This is all calculated calculated on um, on the lap time so seven seven minutes and 30 they do the math they come out what's closest to an hour then they usually add a lap today though they have not added that lap they've just left it at about an hour so it's not an hour plus a lap here for the world championships which uh we'll, we'll, we'll certainly be hearing more about that in post race but it is surprising it is indeed and then matthew vanderpool just uh, exits that section as uh, the gap 24 seconds is your time gap back from your leader matthew vanderpool back to wout van Aert, and both of these riders today it was a crash for matthew vanderpool that handed the that, that, that uh, when wout van Aert was already uh, opened that gap then a front wheel puncture for wout van Aert allowed got, helped matthew vanderpool back to the front and then took over it to, was time lost as Wout Van Aert had to go in and take that bike change and Matthew Van Der Poel has just grown this gap lap after lap here at the moment but Wout Van Aert is still hoping that perhaps something ahead of him can he fight his way back in to this one we are on lap seven of eight here in Ostende if you're just joining us for the first time for these world cyclocross championships and the rivalry playing out yet again all the talk was with between these two riders, would it be Matthew Van Der Poel? Would it be Wout Van Aert? And the gold and silver medal battle is between them at the moment with the advantage to Matthew Van Der Poel. Behind them, though, Tone Art and Tom Pidcock. This is uh, the fight here for the bronze medal. It's six seconds between Tone Art and Tom Pidcock. So can the Brit find his way back and on to the podium? And uh, he is the only non-Dutch or Belgian rider in the top ten at the moment. And the next rider behind that is Kevin Kern of Switzerland in 12th spot at the moment. Jadenek Stiva, uh, Curtis White and Timon Rug in the top 20 are the only other non-Dutch and Belgian riders in the top 20 in this race at the moment. 156 is the gap back to this chasing group. This is Laurent Sweck there at the front of that chase group, just riding that rut there. Really strong rider in the sand. He's there back at the front, but now Mathieu Vanderpool here coming through, doing work as you see Van Aert now with another bike exchange, Marty. 
takes that one. Let's have a look at your sections there. So the bridge, 17 um, of point one. They're just uh, giving us a little bit of comparison on that one as we get a bit of a close up there. That's what we were talking about, the sharp focus, the eyes of Matthew Vanderpool. And that's, I think, sometimes what we what we love about Cross is being able to see the eyes of the riders, being able to see the focus, see them watching their lines. There's your gap, though. 30 seconds in now is the gap between Matthew Vanderpool and uh, Wout Van Aert. At this stage, at the, um, Jeremy, if it finishes like this, uh, you're going 3-1 in the prediction stakes. Let's not talk like that yet, Marty. Let's not talk like that. Let's stay focused on the task at hand right now. There's been uh, there's been problems throughout the day with uh, with Van Aert, with Matthew Vanderpool crash. Uh, we've had Wout Van Aert with a flat tire. So both these riders with their own setbacks. But right now, it looks as though Matthew Vanderpool is riding slightly stronger. He's been able to at least have recent, you know, been able to ace a couple of sections where Wout Van Aert has had a couple of problems. You can really see the fatigue when they go up that 21% gradient on that artery official bridge that takes them over the road and back down to the sand so that part of the course party i think is really really it's very telling as to how the uh how things are how things are going in each of those riders races but right now lot on swick on a tear in this last 10 minutes of this race for him as he comes back up to try to get on to tom pitcock's rear wheel there's your top so at the moment vanderpool van art tone arts so it's uh, the, the netherlands belgium in silver and uh, bronze medal position tom pitcock has got a seven second advantage over the former Belgian champion Laurence Swake who's charging down to try and get up to him onto the steps as Vanderpool Hank holds that bike high skips up those steps where they put a little bit of padding a little bit of grip after uh, the riders in the men's under 23 championships had a had a couple of slips uh, yesterday and uh, Vanderpool riding really close to the barriers here Vanderpool coming up these embankments here with no real problems as he comes through. This is a slick little off camber uphill bit, but these sections he's been able to ride pretty, pretty clean. You can see a different material on these steps today. Yesterday, a couple of riders slipped. Today, they changed that out with something with that has more grip for the riders, especially with the frozen, um, yeah, with the freezing temperatures overnight. They've decided to change that so there's no issues on those stairs. Now, Van Art comes through this section that Vanderpool has just torn up, and they come through here up this embankment down and around Marty the gap looks pretty strong now for Vanderpool as he comes in and he's going to be seeing one lap to go yeah 30 seconds uh, of a gap it will uh, take a monumental effort and uh, some sort of issue for Matthew Vanderpool 51 minutes of racing so far as Matthew Vanderpool gets the bell ringing in his ears he's looking for his fourth elite world cyclocross title and he has one lap to go as uh, he heads out on the, this one, there's his father, Adri van der Poel. Power on this final lap. That was a 7.24 lap um, on that occasion for uh, for Matthew van der Poel. Here's Wout van Aert going through. He gets the bell this time, and it's 29 seconds is the gap. As you see now, Vanderpool makes his way up to that embankment. That's Audrey. That's Audrey Vanderpool is uh, Matthew Vanderpool's dad. Onto the bridge. Matthew Vanderpool goes over there for one direction as he will head down towards the beach for the final time. Drops down here, gets his line right, gets his gearing right as he settles in to try and carry that speed through the sand. You can just see, look at that. Looking for that line, rides that groove, and he gets through it and onto the beach. You can see the tide just coming higher and higher. The fastest lap time so far, Matthew Vanderpool on lap three, 24.20 kilometers an hour for Matthew Vanderpool. Tonart's here in third spot. Can Tom Pidcock find his way back up for a bronze medal in this one? But at the moment, Tonart's, his gap is opening. It's about 14 seconds between third and fourth here between Tonart's and Tom Pidcock. And then Lauren Swake on a course that really is tailor-made for him as well, showing a great late race charge here for Lawrence Swake in fifth spot. 
Sweat comes through there. He's about uh, about 15 seconds or so. No, 10 seconds off of uh, Tom Pidcock. So again, coming into his uh, last lap, he could do something special to be able to get back to uh, to back get back to Pidcock, but probably not enough of a, a runway for him to be able to get back to Tone Audit. So yeah, Tone Audit's looking very solid in third spot right now. Vanar off the bike here, running with it. This is Lars Vanderhaar, who we saw earlier in the show in that interview, coming through for a solid ride in ninth spot. So Vanderhaar on very good form as we see now. Matthew Vanderpool coming off there. We get a good sense. So 53.50 is the time right now. Let's see how Van Air comes off. But that gap, Marty, looks like at this time in the race, without barring any real issues for Matthew Vanderpool coming into these tough sections, he's able to ace these. He could be on his way to another world championship title. Matthew Vanderpool twice a world champion as a junior in Coxsider and Louisville, three times a world elite champion in Tabor 2015 against and Dubendorf is uh, the titles Matthew Vanderpool looking to, to take his fourth world championship title here the fight between uh, him and Wout van Aert the rivalry uh, still very much alive between these two Matthew Vanderpool 13 starts this season nine victories and four times uh, second for him Wout van Aert 13 starts five victories five times seconds two times third and only one time off the post Podium, uh, fourth place in Bohm for Wout van Aert, but this one, this is a painful one for the Belgian in for, in, a, in the home nation in uh, here in uh, Ostende today. Yeah, Wout van Aert's confidence with his success on the road and at the Tour de France, Marty has definitely grown, and it's really it's challenged Mathieu van der Poel in a way that I don't think that he's seen previously. I think in the lead up to this, he hasn't been as dominant. He lost more races in the season that he did race than he ever had, right? Lost to Pitcock and Havre, just barely peaked out the win in Namur, lost in Overijsa and in Dendermonde. So he had some setbacks here, but uh, like I said, he's never been challenged like this before. But when Wout Van Aert made that jump to Jumbo Visma, he really has gained that confidence. He's gained the exposure and he's been able to win some of the biggest races he's undisputably signed one of the biggest contracts in the history of the sport and he's definitely he's uh he is going to be a thorn in Matthew Vanderpool's side as these years continue to tick on but today it does look like Vanderpool has had the has had the upper hand on this as you see this part of the course still giving trouble to the riders outside of Van Aert and Matthew Vanderpool. You just saw Tone Arts grabbing the very levers there. Look at the face now of Matthew Vanderpool as he lines up for that one. Tom Pidcock, good power there for, for the British champion as behind him, Swake has to skip along through the sand, just trying to keep his momentum, just lost that one. That'll help the uh, the British champion ahead of him as uh, Vanderpool glances across, looking for this one now. Wout Van Aert though, keeping the pressure on. It's uh, 30 seconds is the time gap, but we're on the final lap here. Here, and he uh, came into this one the two big rivals uh, lined up for this a uh, front wheel puncture is uh, what it took after Vanderpool's crash for the uh, Dutchman to come back to the front there's your uh, times there 18.2 over the bridge and that has been decisive as well as that sand section today Jeremy yeah it has it definitely 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 has as we go through here now Tone Arts pressing on here, the bronze medal position for Tone Arts, and you can see the pain and effort etched on his face as Tom Pidcock just tries to find just a touch more to try and launch himself back into the bronze medal position, but it would be a tall order to do that. Matty Van Der Poel, that little mistake there, he's just got to try and string these final quarters together. He's got enough of a buffer here, Jeremy, to just get comfortably through these sections. No risk, couple of little dabs. Yeah, yeah, no risks need to be taken right now, Marty, as uh, Vanderpool looks here to add to his World Championship collection. He's been he's been stacking these jerseys, and this year, no different as he comes into these stairs for the last time. Boom, over them, back onto the bike. Like you said, no reason to risk anything. The gap is large enough now that he can lay off the gas a little bit, the pressure on the pedals, and just sit back a little bit and take these corners a little more gingerly. He doesn't want to have any crashes or any wipeouts. To, barring any major disasters like <clears throat> hitting one of those uh, barricades or something like that, um, he should be he should be looking very strong to come back. But it is very very slick, as you can see, even with the pace that he's going, still sliding out and uh, tattering himself through these corners now, Marty. 
as you can see those uh, those little slips and little slides as well van art runs wide there just to try and find a bit of green a bit of grip there for the belgian the home rider this is your final lap you can see there just some of the names just uh, clicking along the bottom uh, but he's going to go over this bank here and then he will see the cinder track ahead of him matthew van der Poel lines up for his fourth world uh, cyclocross championship victory zips up his jersey the wizard of cross does it again matthew van der Poel, another phenomenal performance today he takes the 2021 uci world cyclocross championships what a ride And it's going to be a 30-second gap back to the second-place rider, the silver medal, as he uh, is, uh, meets his pit crew. And the clock is ticking. It's the rainbow jersey. It was the one that he wanted. It's going to be a silver medal today for Wout van Aert for Belgium. It's four from four for the Netherlands. It's a silver medal today for Wout van Aert. 37 seconds is the gap at the line. Yeah, he held the weight of the country there on his uh, on his shoulders for this one. I'm sure he won't be super super happy to be able to come away. He came here for a win, as you heard in that uh, in that interview. He came here for a win, but Pitcock Marty trying to get back to Tone Arts and got it super super close. Arts having to dig real hard for this one. Tone Arts is having to take every risk possible to try and hold off Tom Pidcock here. The Brit is trying to close it down. Tone Arts shifts up through the gears. He wants the bronze medal in this one. Tom Pidcock has to concede on this occasion, but it's third place and a bronze medal for Tone Arts. A great charge by Tom Pidcock in fourth spot here for Great Britain. But the victory today belongs to Matthew van der Poel. That was a great final lap there from Pitcock, wasn't it, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, really did try. You know, gave everything he could to put up a good a, a good fight there. And uh, Pitcock changes direction now, Marty. This is uh, really the end of a end of a chapter for him. You know, this is a, a new a new page in the book, so to speak. And he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be moving over to the Ineos Grenadiers program, and he's definitely gonna be getting a lot more insight into how he can become uh, a, a, a you know a king of this sport and many others, sticking with multi-discipline um, approach as the other riders that are in the front of this race have a uh, very exciting time for for tom pitcock lawrence swake michael van turn out elias a bit quentin hermans are your next finishers so there's quentin hermans coming home here for eight spot two minutes and 23 seconds uh separating them what two riders to go in the top 10 lars van der and joris neuvenhaus with the riders behind it it's lars van der Haar comes home here for ninth spot very, very good day out for Vanderhaar. Um, you know, on a course I wouldn't say was uh, was perfect for him. He really did show a, a very strong, very, very strong ride today and put together a phenomenal season. But this ride, Marty, one that, uh, that I'm sure Joris uh, Neuvenhaus is going to be very, very happy with this. A top 10 here today. It is Joris Neuvenhaus, former 